welcome back to college to no <clears throat> welcome welcome back to college welcome back to college town talk welcome <clears throat> welcome what's going on did i miss something well shan i'm trying to make my voice sound like bob luna <laughs> you're gonna need a little bit more practice because he has been the voice of the golden eagle marching band and emceeing events across the upper cumberland for as long as you've been alive but lucky for you, he's our guest today, and hopefully he can share a few tricks of the trade, as well as tell us about his years as a tech student and his success as a business and community leader. <laughs> well, I am excited to talk with Bob. Besides having one of the most distinctive voices in Cookville, being a past chair of the Cookville Putnam County Chamber of Commerce, being a former Rotarian of the Year, an outstanding alumni award winner, and so much more, he's also just a kind and friendly person. Well, Jonathan, you keep practicing your Bob Luna voice, and I'm going to work on my Amelia Greer impersonation. She is our other guest today, and she is so remarkable. She graduated from Tennessee Tech just last year, and she is already the morning anchor for WDEF News 12 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, she's going to tell us all about her journey to the anchor chair and answer the very important question, what time her alarm clock is set for each of every morning. Let's go ahead and kick things off. Up first, it's our conversation with Tennessee Tech alumnus and the voice of the Golden Eagle Marching Band, Bob Luna. Well, there are certain golden voices here in Cookville that you immediately recognize as soon as you hear them. One of those belongs to our next guest, Tennessee Tech alumnus, community leader, and the voice of the Golden Eagle Marching Band for more than 30 years, Bob Luna. As if those accomplishments aren't enough, Bob is also a Navy veteran, the 2014 Outstanding Alumnus Award winner for the College of Arts and Sciences, a Cookville Rotary Club member, and 2001 Rotarian of the Year, a former chair of the Cookville Putnam County Chamber of Commerce and of the WCTE board, and an MC at countless Tennessee Tech and community events. Bob, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, Bob, you are involved with Tennessee Tech and the community in so many ways. It's it's kind of hard to know where to where to even start. But let's start with your decades long involvement with the Golden Eagle Marching Band. Uh, how did that all come about and how have they convinced you to stay on year after year? Well, I love the Golden Eagle Marching Band. Um, it started off with Joe Herman, who is the band director from late 80s. Uh, gosh, he was the band director for probably 30 years or so. Um, you know, he had seen me MC an event out in town. And he came up to me after it was over and says, you don't know me. I'm Joe Herman. I'm the director of the Golden Eagle Marching Band. And our announcer is dull and boring. Do you think you could read a script the way I write it and be just a little enthusiastic? And I said, yeah, uh, Joe, I, I, I think I can do that. He said, we got a game Saturday. I want you to come over to the game, read this script, and let me see if I like what you're doing. And I want to, you know, see if you like doing this and maybe we can work something out. Well, that was the first game of 1992. Apparently, Joe Herman liked what I did. I certainly enjoyed doing it. And I've been doing it, well, well, since 1992. So yes, I love the Golden Eagle Marching Band. Well, so. that brings comfort to me, Bob, because if Jonathan and I bring the dull and the boring today, we know that we have the expert in the room that can bring the enthusiasm. Now, well, you know, it's not just the Golden Eagle Marching Band. Your voice has been part of literally hundreds of events across the Upper Cumberland over the years. Now, you're almost always the first call for a host or MC in this yeah. town. So your name comes up a lot. You chaired the 2010 gubernatorial debate held at Tennessee Tech. You have yes. seen Tech Centennial Celebration, I believe in 2015. Uh, you've been a candidate reader for past tech commencements. The list goes on and on. And you've even emceed the College of Fine Arts Artie Graw, which happened earlier this year. And that's only scratching the surface. So looking back on all of these many, many events that you've hosted, 
Is there one particular event that strikes you as the most memorable or the one that you are most honored to do? Gosh, there have been so many. You're on Philip Gibbons' assistant. Philip, the only person who's emceed more things than I have is Philip Gibbons. And he's my mentor. Um, he does the tech football, and I help. Well, I fill in when he has a conflict or something. And uh, in fact, that's how I got the men's basketball gig, which I have enjoyed doing for the last. Well, three or four years, I announce men's basketball now, and I get to do the women's team when Philip is not there, when he has a conflict or something. So I really enjoy announcing basketball. What was the event that, yes, the Tech Centennial loved that. Got to meet a lot of important people and uh, really enjoyed him seeing that. Uh, 2017, Barry Wilmore was here. The uh, Eclipse, then couldn't think of it. I got to MC the Eclipse when it came to Tennessee Tech in the summer of 2017. There's and few people on earth that can say they were an MC for a solar eclipse. That was a very, very big deal. And you know, Bob, it doesn't sound like you're retired to me. I was a financial advisor for 33 years. I retired from that at the end of 2017. And now I pretty much volunteer for tech, which I love doing. Uh, I've enjoyed doing that all my life. Uh, Tech has been a, a large part of my life, and I appreciate everything tech has done for me. And now I'm happy to be able to just to give back. Well, Bob, let's stick with that theme of most memorable, because over the years, you've also rubbed shoulders with some pretty memorable people as a business leader in this community and as past president of Cookville Rotary and past chair of the Chamber of Commerce. You have held audiences with former Senate Majority Leader and presidential candidate Bob Dole, former Tennessee Governor Ned McWhorter, former Senator Bob Corker, uh, renowned journalist John Siegenthaler, and so many others. Uh, of all the people you've helped bring to Cookville over the years, who are the people that stand out most to you and why? Oh, gosh. Well, that's a loaded question. Um, most of these people I met through being uh, emceeing the Chamber's annual meeting every year. I did the first 16 years of that. When George Hawford and uh, retired, I did too from that. And now I'm glad they have some new leadership over there. Oh, the gosh. Uh, Bob Corker was probably my favorite. I enjoyed hosting him so much. Uh, he and I seemed to hit it off uh, as a small business owner where he got his start. Bob Corker was, I think, a remarkable politician. I wish he had stayed around and had run for president. I think he would have been a great choice to run this country and because he was a small businessman and that was his background. But he and I seemed to hit it off and we sparred back and forth there at the chamber meeting and the audience apparently just loved it. And he, he was one of my favorites. Uh, David Orr was another one of my favorites. You know, he was on every info commercial <laughs> that I remember growing up and through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Anyway, love David Orr. Harry Stone Cipher. You know, he was the CEO of Boeing when he and the CEO of McDonnell Douglas met in a bar one Sunday afternoon and merged two top 10 companies on the back of a napkin. No lawyers, no advisors, no accountants. This is the story I wanted to hear. And he told most of it at the chamber meeting. Really enjoyed it. He's been a, a, one of tech's biggest supporters and philanthropists over the years. Really enjoyed meeting him. Uh, Lamar Alexander, Barry Wilmore, love Barry Wilmore. Oh, at the Eclipse, where Barry Wilmore was here, I got to escort him and introduce him all day long. Of course, Barry's a Navy veteran, and so am I, even though he was a, an aviator captain, and I was a lowly underwater submariner. And uh, for the chamber annual meeting, I wore my Dolphins insignia, which are what the submarines get when they qualify on submarines. But he and I hit it off pretty well, being former Navy guys. And Barry is one of the, you know, nicest, smartest people that you'll ever want to meet. Uh, of course, all the governors. I've known every governor since Frank Clement. The only governor I never got to meet was Ray Blanton. And a couple of reasons. He, either he was in jail or I was in the Navy. I'm not, I don't remember which. Uh, Ned Ray McWhorter, fine gentleman. Randy Boyd is probably one of the, is my favorite of the chamber speakers we had. He was here when he ran for governor in before this 
last two terms. Anyway, he I got to introduce him as the chamber speaker, a remarkable man, very intelligent businessman. Anyway, he was probably my favorite. Bob Corker, I'll always think the world of Bob Corker as a person and as a businessman. Uh, David Oreck, Harry Stone Cipher, Barry Wilmore, Lamar Alexander, Diane Black. Diane Black came to my office when she was running for the first time for her congressional seat, sat down, spent 20 minutes with me, 20 minutes out of her time she spent in my office. I respect that and I always thought the world of Diane Black. Um, well, you've, you've met anyway. a, a long list of people, and I would say you're pretty memorable to all of them as well. And it's timely that you would mention Barry Wilmore, because, of course, he is headed back up into space, uh, I believe, the beginning of May on the Starliner mission, uh, yeah. weather permitting. So we're all looking forward to cheering him on. Now, Bob, let's go back to where you spoke about being in the U.S. Navy and you traveled yeah. across mm -hmm. the world as a sailor. Mm -hmm. When you earned your speech degree from tech in 1982, you could have at that point gone anywhere. What made you choose to stay here and build a life in Cookville? Needless to say, um, as the director of tourism for the Visitors Bureau, I think you made a very educated and smart decision, but I would like to know your thoughts on that. That is an interesting question. You know, I went to tech originally, uh, it's, I started tech in 1970. In fact, President Derryberry was the president when I was a first time student. So I've also gotten to meet all of the tech presidents since Everett Derryberry. I grew up in Nashville. Part of what happened, well, no, what did happen was I met a young lady who ended up becoming my wife and who is from Cookville. So that's the main reason that we stayed and I came back after the Navy. Uh, I was gone for about six years. I was in the Navy from January of 75 to March of 81. Uh, came back and graduated and finally finished my degree in 82. At that point, I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but we wanted to live in Cookville because my wife's family was here. But uh, this has been a great place to raise our family. Gosh, we're a tech family. I met my wife at tech. Both of our daughters are tech graduates. And even though my grandchildren are young, I hope they'll plan to go to tech when they get old enough. <laughs> well, John, Jonathan and I both have learned that through these podcasts, there's a whole lot of matchmaking that goes on at Tech where they think that for yeah. finding their spouse there and it just changes the trajectory of their life. And you are a prime example of that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in fact, this, my wife and I have just celebrated our 50th anniversary of meeting. We hadn't been married oh. 50 years, but we met spring quarter of 1974 in. The big lecture hall up on the third floor of Henderson Hall. We were both in a, in a history class, and I had spotted Gail, my wife, and went up to the professor. Was uh, Dr. Will Schrader history class? I said Dr. Schrader, uh, who's that girl about eight rows in, about six seats over? He says, I don't know anybody in here but you. You know, I, he called me by name, and I sat on the front row. So anyway, I'm I. Uh, Gail, my wife, had, was in a show at the Wesley Foundation. I had gone to see it, and I spotted her in the show. So we actually got introduced backstage at Wesley Foundation by Marge Hargrove, who was the theater director at Wesley in the early 70s. So, yes, Peck is the most important <laughs> thing that has happened uh, in my life. Give me a chance to meet my wife. Uh, so many other people I've had the opportunity to meet over the years. And I just am happy and honored that I get to be a part of Tennessee Tech. Bob, I, I love hearing all that, but you completely preempted the final question of this interview, which is, <laughs> which is what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? So maybe... Maybe bes uh, besides meeting your, your... Ding, ding, call on me. I know this answer. I know this answer. <laughs> now, I came here to uh, be on the debate team. I did forensics and speech activities in high school. Uh, so I thought, Cookville, Tennessee Tech, that's exactly what I wanted to do for college. So I ended up coming here uh, and again, meeting my wife. The speech and debate team um, gave me the opportunity to do, do so many other things. In fact, just this past week, I got invited to speak for one of the business classes, which I, since I was a financial advisor for 33 years, 
even though I don't have a business degree, I, that was my vocation. And when I go in to speak to these students, particularly the MBA students, I carry a copy of the Wall Street Journal. And it's all right, let's go to the one ads, uh, uh, classified job opportunities. And these are middle and senior level management. These are $100,000 jobs. And I look at it and say, every job here, whether you're finance, whether you're econ, whether you're HR, whether you're law, whatever business job you're looking at, every job description says must possess exceptional oral and written communication skills. And I give this to the business students and say, in my opinion, one of the reasons I had a successful career in business was my ability to communicate effectively. And I learned that from English and speech classes at Tennessee Tech. Bob, uh, we appreciate your time today. You are a great uh, tribute to Tennessee Tech and all that the university makes possible. Thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Well, I appreciate it, Jonathan. And Jan, thank you so much. And I appreciate the work that both of you all do for my university, our university, Tennessee Tech. Our next guest is a proud Golden Eagle alumna who helps viewers across the Tennessee Valley start their days as the morning anchor for WDEF News 12 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Amelia Greer graduated from Tennessee Tech in 2023, and believe it or not, just 10 days later, she started her career in television news. Since coming to WDEF last year, she has been promoted to weekend anchor and then promoted again to morning anchor. And here's a fun fact behind the scenes. I got to meet Amelia when she was a tech student and her public relations class developed a mock marketing campaign for us at the Visitors Bureau. It was not hard to spot her talent even back then. And I'm so happy for Amelia. Amelia, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for all the kind words. That is so sweet. That It feels like that was like, even though it's been maybe not even a year since all of that happened, it kind of feels like a lifetime ago. So much has gone on, but I was, I still treasure those moments I had, even as a senior approaching the workforce and all of those moments I got to take basically advantage of in the communication department. So that was great. Well, I remember you and your fellow students had lots of questions about doing an interview, how to make a good first impression when you're trying to get a job. Obviously, you needed no tips from me whatsoever. <laughs> Let's talk no. about <laughs> this whirlwind year that you had. You graduated from Tennessee Tech less than a year ago. You started a new job and you have already been promoted two times. Most people cannot even say that in a long running career. Now you're on the air in living rooms across Southeast Tennessee for two hours every single morning. Now, what has that been like for you? And just as importantly, what time is your alarm clock going off these days? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, um, it's been, like you said, it has been a whirlwind of experiences. And even from last year, don't discredit yourself. I did take some of your advice when you'd mentioned just, I mean, making a good first impression for, for your employer. And I've had like interviews around that time as well, just my first kind of preliminary interviews. And I remember you distinctly saying, you know, treat every single person at the organization the same, no matter what department where they're at, if they're a custodian, if like whatever hierarchy they are, they are a part of. I, it made me really realize I do value every single part of our department. And I think it's helped me build relationships with our sales team, our marketing team, our production team, our obviously our news department, but just kind of treating everyone the same and being really close to them. And it helps it, when someone's in your IFB ear that's giving you cues that if you're nice to them, they're probably going to be nice to you back. So that's, that's the whole thing. But <laughs> well, um, you really was, were listening. I'm so impressed. But okay, talking about the alarm clock part, and just I mean about waking up in general, it has been a process. For a 22 year old, I wake up at approximately 3:30 on a good day every day. That's when the first alarm goes off. Then I have a couple, and I need to be out the door by like four, four. 10 because I'm supposed to be at the station by 4 30 to kind of start prepping for the show that starts at 5 a.m. So when I get there, I go in, I check our show rundown that has, you know, the scripts and all that sort of stuff and make sure I 
pronounce words correctly <laughs> and, you know, make sure everything is kind of um, worked out from where our morning producer put the show together and she's great. And so I kind of just get ready for the day and that helps me be a little bit more acclimated. But obviously there's days you're running behind. There's days where things don't go your way. There's things that you spill coffee on yourself and you're like, oh, I hope I have another outfit in my car, you know, small things like that. But it has been a great experience. I enjoy waking up. I, I don't enjoy waking up. I should say that. But I do enjoy work when I get there. And I love our crew and our just our news department in general. I love that this was a raw and honest answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't love waking up, but you do love your job. So that's okay. a that's a yin and yang going on there. Amelia, I know that when you were a Tennessee Tech student, there were a handful of faculty and staff that made an impression on you. But there was one in particular that you said you really counted as a mentor. And in fact, uh, for our listeners that don't know, there's a tradition at Tech where students are given a challenge coin their freshman year and asked to hang on to it and give it to someone who most impacted their college journey upon graduation. And you gave yours to this instructor. And I thought it was such a cool story. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. Well, I sing her praises every single time. She's one of the most influential educators and, you know, just professors I've had in my entire school career. And that is Dr. Colleen Medier. She is absolutely phenomenal. She is one of those professors that you know, just cares about you. And you're not just a number in the classroom. You're not just someone that they check on Eagle Online. And they're like, okay, she came to class today. Like she, they genuinely care about you. And in all of her, the different courses I had, even if they weren't technically journalism focused and preparing me for the career I have now, they prepared me for just interacting with people, being a communicator, being, you know, just an adult at the end of the day and learning how there's different people of different backgrounds and just communicating with people and overall. And so I, I absolutely love her. She was great. She's reached out to me since then. And I remember one of the first interviews I had at this new station took place on a test day for her, or it was a prep day. It was one of like the more important days of the classroom for our research class. And I said, Hey, I have this opportunity. I don't want to miss this review day, but I just want to let you know what's going on. And she automatically texted me and said, you better not miss this. Let me know how the interview goes. Like she just, she always cared. And a bunch of like clapping emojis and I was just a very encouraging person. And so that always made me want to be like that for other people. And she's always been a great role model, but it was a very full circle experience to, she was one of the first people I ever met during my college visit. And then having her throughout the years at tech and then giving her to all, give, getting to ultimately give her that challenge coin. It was, that was a really sweet experience. Well, I know that meant a lot to her. It, it is important. Little bitty things like that have great impact when you think that you've influenced someone's life as a mentor, even a cheerleader for their success. Now, Amelia, a little while back, we interviewed another local news anchor on this podcast, Tennessee Tech alumna Bisky Duncan, and she's with KSLA in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I'm going to ask you the same question that we posed to her. Here we go. What has been your favorite news story to cover as a journalist? And on the flip side, what has been the hardest story to tell? I feel like that is a very hard question because in our industry, you have, I mean, there's a million different stories off the top of your head. Uh, one of the favorite things I got to see beautiful tulips th this weekend, but then you also, then on the flip side, you'll see very hard stories like a mother who just had a abuse battle or something of that, a mother that killed her two four-year-old sons and things like that, that you don't doesn't ever fully leave you. Sadly, you kind of learn to compartmentalize, put it in different boxes, learn how to get through the day. But after the day is over, you sometimes come back to yourself and you think, what did I just read? And so it's hard because you're still a human. Like you don't want to be the news robot that just delivers the news because everyone else is feeling the same thing that they see on the air as well. But you kind of learn how to get through it for the shows, get through it, and then just kind of digest it later but i feel like one of my favorite stories i've gotten to do this is a hard question i'm trying to think of all I, i'm definitely more of a feature person i work as the news anchor but i love the lifestyle things we've gotten to do i love the just the fun feature stories we've gotten to do and i've also gotten the privilege of interviewing one of my former bosses so that was a full circle moment the cookie jar cafe in dunlap tennessee it had oh, went 
it had went through a fire. And so I was able to do follow ups from that. I've been able to work with Miss Sue Ann Lockhart. And that was a cool experience because I used to serve there as a waitress and a hostess. And that was one of my first ever jobs. And then now to be like, oh, can you come on our channel? Can you come on <laughs> our um, station to talk about all this different stuff? It was very, very cool. And I'm co actually co coordinating things with her in the process of trying to get her back on our morning show, but I don't want her to have to wake up as early as she does because that would be insane. Anyway, but it was super, super cool. And so that was, I think, one of my more special stories was getting to take a piece of home and really get to share these stories from the small town of Dunlap that I'm from that not everyone maybe gets coverage wise, but, and another church um, that was helping during a winter storm in Bledsoe County. And they reached out to me because they knew of me and it was, it was just, it was super neat. But then I think some of the harder stories is I had to cover the follow-up of when a man was involved in an officer involved shooting and he was um, known as a gang member and just seeing his family respond to that and all of the emotions that go around that. But then also, all of the divide between even the justice system and the family. And it was just, it was, it was hard to be a part of that story as a reporter and also covering it as an anchor as well. Well, you've told some very compelling stories uh, in your time at WDEF. I'm pretty partial to the one you did on CG England uh, being grand marshal of the tech homecoming parade. Uh, but Amelia, this usually this is your job, uh, but I'm going to steal your line just this one time and deliver some breaking news. <clears throat> this just in, Amelia Greer will be speaking via video at Tennessee Tech's spring 2024 commencement ceremony. So what does that mean to you to be invited back to your alma mater? And what would be your advice to these new graduates? Oh, absolutely. Well, I also, that was um, a fun story I had to tie in as well. One of my close friends was a part of sending in the cookbook footage and all that stuff. So that was a great thing. And I'm excited to look forward to being a part of the commencement ceremony. I don't think I really wrapped my brain around it. As soon as I got that notification from you the other day, or I know from you for this podcast, but then also from Rick and Noel and people from the communication and marketing department about the commencement speech. I don't, I was just kind of like, what is my life? Like, this is so weird being able to not even be graduated a full year ago and being able to deliver a commencement, just short speech address, words of encouragement to the future Golden Eagle graduates of this year is absolutely insane to me. I had already started to kind of draft it up and write things down. And I was like, this is so weird to think that I was where they were at literally a year ago. And not everybody's graduation steps and process will look the same as mine. I was fortunate enough to be able to land this job. I spent my entire spring break of senior year doing jobs, posting things, getting my resume built up. And so that's kind of how I was able to land a job 10 days later <laughs> after graduation. But it was not everybody's process looks like that. So I kind of during my speech wanted to talk about Oh, my my time in the news industry, but obviously not every single person is going to have that same experience. So just kind of how did my time as a student prepare me for being in the workforce now? And how did these challenges that you sort of take advantage of, of cramming last minute or having professors that you might be irritated with or things that you were just stressed out at the time, but then you learn later on, that was such a good lesson for me. And I've learned so much from that. And what you kind of look back on as an adult and in the workforce in general. So that's something I kind of preview. I'm still in the works of making sure everything makes sense. <laughs> that's kind of, I, I'm super honored and excited to be doing that as well. Well, that that is an extraordinary honor. You're not wrong and it has to feel surreal for you. Now, Amelia, we first off appreciate you taking time out of your day, especially considering your day starts so early now in your new career. But we are going to end our interview with the same question that we do every single time. And so here we go. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Well, I just tech was really the stepping stones of what got me into the workforce and what made me love journalism as well. I started off as just an introduction journal uh, commu communications student, excuse me. And I found a love for journalism along the way. I don't even remember completely what the course was. I just remember thinking this might be something I want to do. And I had so many opportunities from just working on campus for Tennessee Tech, the marketing communications department as a student writer, and then having a summer internship where I did social media and 
researching different tech traditions that we highlighted as well and getting to learn about on-camera production and off-camera production and a lot of that I credit to the people who did the videoing and I did a lot of the on-camera stuff but all of the things that go into it, it really it gave me a lot of admiration for that and journalism of all forms I had you know various professors who communication is about communicating with people shocker I know but like you know learning how to uh communicate, learning how to connect with people. And I think that journalism gets, takes it a step further and makes that to the masses, to a bigger audience and how you can seek truth and report it as one of the SPJ or whatever official standards. And I try to keep that in my day-to-day -day basis of at the end of the day, does put personal matters aside, what is happening in this scenario? You have to stay neutral. You have to try your best to offer information to people and that be unbiased information and that's hard because we're all humans and we all want to insert our own opinions but um i think that tech has just really granted me with the confidence and the skill set to be able to go out into the workforce to be able to live my dreams it's weird for the long time i didn't think oh i want to be a news anchor i think it just kind of happened for me and it happened in the back of my mind i thought maybe i could do this and the it's just been one thing after another for me i credit that to God and to my faith and that carrying me through. I don't think of it as just being luck, but I think also having a university that prepared me for that and prepared me to have confidence and to soar on wings like eagles, you know, like that sort of thing. It made me confident in knowing that I can do this and no matter what challenges come my way, I can handle it. Well, Amelia, you are a wonderful success story for Tennessee Tech. And we are going to look forward to seeing even more of your future successes. Thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me. And I apologize for still being in the process of my mid-afternoon nap after being up. All but I appreciate you guys reaching out. This has been absolutely so amazing. And I still don't think I'm fully processing that all of this is happening. And for our listeners, you can watch Amelia each weekday morning from 5 to 7 a.m. Eastern on WDEF News 12 in Chattanooga or online at WDEF.com. What great interviews. Those two are so much fun. We want to thank Bob Luna and Amelia Greer for being our guests today on College Town Talk. I was big fans of both of them before the interview, and I'm an even bigger fan now. And Shan and I would also be big fans of yours if you would take a moment to subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with your friends. It all helps to spread the word about the great things happening right here in Cookville. Join us again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.